My grandfather had worked for Georgia Marble for most of his life. So when I was in grade school, my grandfather would take me out to the mine and basically let me loose. So he actually literally made my first rock hammer, which I still have. I loved crystals. The fact that you get these very unique shapes of minerals, and no one did that. That's just nature. Because basically, these minerals grow from hot water. And in fact, that's kind of led into my research, where now I, I really study how hot water in the earth drives volcanic eruptions, and how hot water in the earth actually dissolves, transports, and concentrates most of the metals that we mine for the material resources we need for modern society. Well, the field work, one of the primary tools is a big hammer, so you're always collecting big rocks. But you use a compass to find your way around, and nowadays it's, it's GPS, of course, to try to locate where we are for collecting samples. I've collected rocks at Mount Vesuvius over the years at Augustine Volcano, which is one of the Aleutian volcanoes, uh, 100, 150 miles south-southwest of um, Anchorage, Alaska. And the idea is to try to find an appropriate sample in these rocks that provides some information on the amount of metals and the amount or concentrations of the volatile components. Again, water, carbon dioxide, sulfur-bearing gases, and chlorine-bearing gases. I have an experimental laboratory here where we actually take crushed samples of the rock and seal them up, put them inside of our equipment. We squeeze them with argon gas at high pressure. We use an electrical heater to heat them up to melting temperatures. And then we use some of the very same analytical equipment once we're done with these experiments that we had used for the natural samples to analyze the experimentally prepared samples and try to compare what nature tells us versus what we've done at known conditions in the lab to understand the degassing process that precedes or accompanies volcanic eruptions. I think probably one of the most exciting things I've ever done was when we were working on the Gottesman Hall of Planet Earth. For several years, we were collecting specimens and video and, and other things for the exhibit. And so we had the opportunity to go to the Big Island of Hawaii. And we're working there with some of the volcanologists at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. We went out one day, and there was a lava flow that had come out, and it just crusted over. So we're coming up, and the volcanologist puts his boot down. His boot catches fire, the base of his boot. He just tamps it out like it's nothing. We go about 10 feet upstream, go walking across this, and there was literally molten lava underneath this crust, and we walked across this surface. And I gotta admit, it was probably not the brightest thing I've ever done, but it was one of the most exciting things I've ever done in my life, just knowing that it was just some of the freshest rock just forming underneath our feet on the surface of the planet. What I would like to see in my lifetime would be an improved ability to predict some volcanic eruptions. It's interesting, if you go to Indonesia, I've read the statistic, there are over 200 million inhabitants of the country of Indonesia, and yet 50% of the population live within eyesight of an explosively erupting volcano. So it's, it's not so much here, there's direct threat to the American population, but you go to other countries where they may not have the resources, and there are severe potential impacts for the populations, particularly for explosively erupting volcanoes, that I think it would be really useful, and I would hope to see some major advances in that.